Well, yesterday was fun. I haven't been out in a, in a gathering like that in quite some time. It was nice. So we met John yesterday, but today we're going to meet Josh, who's a friend of John. And he's another guy that I hung out with quite a bit while I was here in Shenzhen on Jaya 1.0. So let's say hi to him and uh, talk a little bit about uh, Singles Day. The day four years ago today, I was laying on a road all by myself, shattered and broken. What's up? Holy shit, look at your neck. You got like double the neck that I remember you having when I saw you. We're just sitting here having breakfast and talking about life and things. Yeah, but at the end it's how's, how's your life? What, what's been changed? Same You're the same. Same, same old, same, same old. old. Yeah, Josh uh, has always been a physical fitness sort of uh, guru or, or very interested. When I came here, um, how did we meet? Did you send me a message first? The oh, the swim. The That's swim, right. Which is still my Damn, Josh and I, we swam across the Yellow River. I have. A, do you like the video I made about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That turned out pretty nice. It was awesome. That was awesome. Was awesome. So, when people say, what's the dangerous, scariest thing you've done? I still say. Oh, dude. I swam across the We swam across the Yellow River in Xining, right? Xining. And the water was like four degrees. Yeah. You jumped into that. You had a wetsuit, right? Yeah, you had a bodysuit. I, I was in a speedo. <laughs> Man, when I went into that water, it was like getting, it was like getting hit in the gut. Golly. So cold. So cold. Amazing though. The Russian guys, zero degrees. Zero degrees. Uh, bearing straight, zero degrees. The guys swam across the <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You were like, I live in Shenzhen, we should meet up, and then we should do some, I, I, we worked out a physical fitness, I got a video there, I'll link to that one as well, yeah, 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 we uh, the physical fitness routine, and then I left and got hit by a truck. <laughs> yeah, what, I only made a few days later. A few days, a few days, yeah, just like four days after I left here, I got run over. Today, 11-11 was the day I got hit by the truck. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about that a little later. So, yeah. we were we were just talking about how um, when you make when I make the videos I make, I, I have a few guys, they tell me I should do some more like landscape stuff and like showing the, 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 the more of the places that I go and maybe less of this kind of monologuing, talking to the camera bits. And, and then like we were just talking about how like the way that I travel, the way that I do the videos that I do and the way that I produce the videos for YouTube, it's so specifically created so that it can be continued anymore and it might be too much for me to continue to do the videos and it might push me away from even it might push me over that I, i'm in a very slim range where the amount of work it takes to make a video is sustainable yeah, yeah. and if i record going. more more stuff on the road and maybe i add another hour to my ride because every time you stop it takes about five or ten minutes you know yeah, yeah. you got to take yourself out of riding mode You've got to video this, you've got to think about how it's going to work together. Yeah. And so adding that cumulative over time, will that push me away from doing videos in the first place? And all of a sudden it becomes more of a job than a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're always existing in this thing. Obviously I always try and take your advice as much as I can because you guys are watching my videos. But uh, living in a slim, slim range and I'm very happy with where I am right now. You know? I really had a fantastic catch up conversation with Josh. It's very interesting to reflect on time that's passed and where you are today, where you were back then, all good stuff. And reflecting on a day like today is quite amazing. So for those of you that don't know, uh, this is my third time starting my, my tour. The first time was in 2014. I cycled all the way down here to Shenzhen. Then I turned up and I was headed towards Guilin, like about four days out from here. Truck, a box truck, came up from behind, clipped me, more than, I mean, hit me dead on. At the time I had a trailer, so the truck actually hit my trailer, drove through the trailer and just obliterated it. And then I think the obliteration of the trailer softened the blow. So before the, the, the impact hit the trike that I had at the time, uh, the trailer saved me. And so on uh, November 11, 1111, 2014, I found myself laying in the, in the road by myself. It was very interesting. Like today, 
in China they call it Singles Day. It's, a, it's like a shopping holiday, and uh, I found myself single in the in the road, like a single man. Annie was uh, in contact with me shortly thereafter. I mean, you can look at the episode of the vlog and see it if you want to see it. Kind of interesting. I let the cameras roll the whole time. It destroyed the trike I had at the time, shattered my shoulder, sent me back to the beginning. But basically, I was back to Ningbo. I was trying to figure out where to go from there. I'm just having to put the pieces back together. And I mean, fast forward four years, so many things have happened. Mount Everest, Eva, running a marathon in North Korea, getting my new trike from Germany, bringing it back here, putting it together, riding with Ryan, my friend, on the Gio 2.0 tour, tearing up my knee, doing rehab, almost surgery, then getting back on the road, riding Korea, Japan, Taiwan, my dad, I mean, just a million different things have happened. I don't know what would have happened had I not had the accident, you know? I'm not sure where I would be. How, how much farther I would have gone, if tragedy would have found me another way, another time, or if I would have just been on the road cruising. If I was on the road since 2014, the original roadmap, I didn't even have uh, Australia on the roadmap, so I would have bypassed Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Australia, and I would have gone straight through to uh, India and uh, Burma. And by now, geez, I'd be, uh, I don't know, I would be in the Middle East maybe. I mean, the original roadmap that I had had me going into Syria. That was before Syria sort of really blew up. Four years ago, it was it was still pretty pretty rough. I, I'm sure I would have bypassed it. But yeah, who knows? You know, I always like to think about morphing and twisting negatives into positives. You can't live life as a person that looks to the negative of things. It's very easy to do that. It's very easy to think that uh, the world is working against you. You know, but that's not really my attitude. So even even while I was sitting in the street wondering where my uh, life was going to go four years ago today. I still knew it was going to go good places. It was just going to take some time to get over the shock of what I, what I had encountered. I mean, some positives from having that accident. I added Australia, New Zealand. I, uh, I added Korea and Japan and have since cycled Korea and Japan. My original route was going straight south from Ningbo, and then Japan and Korea were basically outside of my uh, of my tour. I, 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 I desired to go there, but I thought going up and around and then down, it didn't fit in my in my route plan. So having the accident allowed me to take a step back and say, all right, if I'm gonna go back at this, what do I wanna do? Maybe I'd like to add Korea, Japan. And then, and then ride around Taiwan. I think I, I still wanted to ride around Taiwan. I mean, I would really regret not not riding Japan and Korea had had I not. The accident provided me an opportunity to do that. Thank you for hitting me, sir. That Chinese man, dazedly looking at his cell phone and texting while he was supposed to be driving and running into me. Thank you. Thank you for adding what is to be an amazing Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Australia, and New Zealand. Gosh, I mean, the, the thought that I was once not planning to go there is so far from my mind now. It's just like a natural thing that I'm gonna be riding those countries. But I wouldn't have had I not been hit and I continued on my original path. Thank you, sir, that hit me in the side of the road. For you have given the opportunity for a new life to enter this world. And her name's Eva. She's beautiful, sweet, amazing, and I love her. And if I would have continued on that path, me and Annie would have never uh, brought her into this world. So thanks for that. Just to let you know, I'm walking to the laundromat. I need to wash some clothes. So I figured if I could put the clothes in, talk to you guys a little bit, eat some dinner, head back to the, uh, to the hotel, and then uh, maybe edit some video and then tomorrow very early go to Hong Kong.
I was able to run a marathon in North Korea. That was pretty cool. That was done in the uh, space of time. And that was something that wasn't even on my radar, but has since become a, a major thing in my life. That was a big surprise. That was an invite from a friend of mine that lived in Ningbo. And he said, hey, I've got this opportunity to run this marathon in North Korea. Do you want to go? I had had my surgery. And uh, I was like, well, I got nothing better to do. So let's do it, you know. I was able to rethink some things about the way that I capture and deliver the content to YouTube. Um, before the accident, I was producing longer form documentaries. And I was thinking that the way that I was going to travel around the world is that I was going to be producing videos for commercial projects. Say, go to a hotel, say, I'd like to stay at your hotel, maybe we can work something out where I get some payment and I can make you a really professional video. I was carrying really heavy equipment. I was way overloaded. I was traveling in a completely unique form. But after the accident, um, I had Mount Everest come and I decided to retool my entire format to like this kind of daily vlogging format. A lot of you guys missed the, missed the videos I used to shoot that were like uh, travel travelogues. I'm not sure that that would have been as sustainable as these uh, vlogs are because these vlogs I can push out a lot quicker. I feel like I can get a bit more intimate with you guys and it's more of a following on a journey as opposed to like little condensed um, stories over longer periods of time. So, I mean, that was a big thing. That wouldn't have happened uh, necessarily if I would have continued on my tour with, uh, without having the accident. So thank you, sir, Mr. Chinese gentleman that bought me a hamburger after he found me lying in the road due to his neglect. Thank you, sir. We should all write him a thank you letter. No. No, I don't think so. Basically, life is about perspective. Um, it's all on how you see things. Even while I was laying in the street, I knew things were going to work out pretty decent. You know, all things said and done. Time passes. And you can't, like, look at things negative because they'll just tear you down. Time flows forward whether you're excited and happy about it or uh, angry and spiteful. So... You keep that open mind and you'll be pretty good to go. major things that uh, came out as a positive uh, when I had that accident was learning a little bit about taking precautions and keeping my eyes open and being prepared for <laughs> even the most uh, unfortunate circumstances. Maybe I was a bit too confident and uh, getting in an accident kind of shows you that, uh, you know, bad things can happen, you know. And maybe my eyes are a little bit wider. My attention is a little bit more focused. And who knows if that's helped me uh, along the lines. You know, maybe I've avoided a couple of potential disasters because I have had that accident teach me a lesson that I need to stay a little bit more aware. Laundromat was closed. How do people wash their clothes in, uh, in this city? It's just hand wash them, I guess. I just hate carrying all that soap. When you go to the store, you want to buy like laundry soap. You have to buy this this huge container, and it's just obnoxious. I would much rather go to a machine, put some quarters in, and then just get her done. You know, move on. Anyways, I'm gonna figure it out. I'll talk to you guys later. 11:11, a day that will live in infamy for me. See you later. Bye. -bye. Next time on the Jayo Vlog. Good morning, folks. Today, we have to go to Hong Kong. I always thought
thought it would be hard to ride a bike in Hong Kong. This is a hat that covers up every 